Hi everyone, welcome to episode 10 of Paranormal Among Us. On today's show, I talk with author T. Krulos. We're going to be talking about the Chicago Mothmen, among other things that come up during the conversation. And we'll get to that in a few minutes. First, I wanted to invite anyone who has a paranormal story to email me at paranormalamongus72 at gmail.com. That's paranormalamongus72 at gmail.com. And I'll read the story on an upcoming episode. Also, make sure you like and subscribe to the channel so you don't miss anything that comes out. All right, before we get into the interview with T. Krulos, I wanted to talk about a possible Sasquatch sighting. It's a little different. This one comes to us from the North American Wood Ape Conservancy. Back in May 2016, two members, Marvin Leeper and John Harrell, were testing out Leeper's new dash cam in Akota County, that's in southeastern Oklahoma. The men arrived to a location where Leeper had a previous strange encounter that involved what would be called wood ape chatter. It was around midnight when the men arrived at the location, and they sat in the truck for about 30 minutes, scanning the wooded area with infrared, thermal, and acoustic equipment. They received nothing other than normal activity from the woods right in front of them that night. They decided to walk into the woods toward a creek that ran toward, uh, through the property to check for signs of activity. Now, about 20 yards away from the truck, Harold spotted this footprint. After thoroughly examining the footprint, the two men concluded that it had definitely come from some sort of wooded ape creature and wasn't human. Then, both men noticed multiple footprints leading away from the creek towards a nearby fence. Each footprint measured 12 inches long and as wide as 4.5 inches. Also, the distance between the prints measured at 36 inches, and the men concluded that the creatures weren't running but walking at a fast pace. Later the next day, the two men returned to the site to get a plaster cast made of one of the tracks to study. They concluded that the print is that of a juvenile wood ape based on the fact that the print was only a quarter of an inch deep in the mud. The area of Dakota County is well known for, and for reported and unreported sightings of wood apes. So what do you think? What was it? What do you think it was? Leave me a comment and let me know what you think. And T. Krulos, thank you so much for joining us today. Appreciate you coming on. Hey, thanks for having me here. All right. Um, so you know, I recently had surgery, and one of the things that I had um, kind of vowed to myself to do was read more instead of sitting on the couch watching TV. Uh -huh. And the first book that I picked up was uh, Monster Hunters. I nice. really yeah. enjoyed it. That was pretty darn cool. You, you covered all kinds of things in that book. Yeah, yeah, it was um, it was one of the great adventures of my life. I think mm -hmm. working on that book, um, I this was my second book, and I had finished my first, and my publisher thankfully was like, "Hey, what do you want to do next?" And I was like, "You know, I've always been a little bit fascinated by people that investigate the paranormal," mm -hmm. and um, I had had kind of an interest in this since I was a teenager, when I was a teenager, I loved to read books about UFO cases. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I was interested in Bigfoot and, and ghost stories and, and all that. I, w I certainly wasn't an expert, but I was interested in it. I love to watch shows like Unsolved Mysteries. Mm -hmm. And, uh, and I'd caught some stuff on TV, like Ghost Hunters. And I was like, it's kind of fascinating. Um, so I pitched that to my publisher, I'm like, I'd really like to do a book where I meet people and join them on investigations mm -hmm. and figure out what this is all about. Is there something to it or, or what? And they were into that idea, I think, because paranormal stuff is pretty popular in general, you know? And um, I kind of, I set out, I made this list of different types of people that I wanted to meet um and uh i started looking for a local group that i could hopefully hang out with and found one here in milwaukee uh the paranormal investigators of milwaukee mm -hmm. so i spent quite a time with a bit of time with them on investigations but i did some traveling around the country and experienced a bunch of different stuff how many investigations did you go on with that group uh, I think it was about 12 or so oh. over the course of a, a year, a year and a half. 
anything uh, extraordinary happen or some any really cool um, evidence that you come up with? I mean, I think my most interesting night with them was uh, they, and I, I really loved this about the group, um, in summer, they would take their vacation time at the same time and travel around and go to very, you know, famously haunted places. So I met up with them. This was in uh, September. I forget what year it was. But I met up with them at Bobby Mackey's Music World. Okay. Um, which is, you know, it's pretty famous because it's been on all the uh, shows and stuff. Yeah. And... It was a frightening experience. Uh, there was weird stuff that happened that night. Uh-huh. One of the um, team members was suddenly sort of crying, and she said that she had lost her eyesight and her, her hands had gone numb, and she was very frightened. Uh. And, um, you know, there was a couple other moments that night where people were getting very strange feelings unlike themselves. Yeah. And uh, not the night that I went with them was not the most intense, but they had done a previous investigation where one of the team members had been sort of pushed against a wall by an Ooh. unseen force. And uh, one of the members became very angry. Like mm-hmm. she felt like she was about to violently like lash out at her teammates. So it, it's, it's almost like place. <laughs> Yeah, sounds like it. <laughs> it, it. It sounds like it, it's it's one of those things where you, you believe it, uh, sort of, before you go on one of the investigations, and then once yeah. you're on the vac- in, vacation on the investigation, something happens, and then you're like, "Oh my god, yeah, what in the world is that?" That's yeah, pretty cool. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So it, that it, was the most memorable thing, I think. Yeah. And you spent a lot of time talking about Chicago Mothman too. Yeah. That I think um, that's another one of those things where it, it's it's hard to believe until you see it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I I became uh, really interested in that case. Um, I mean, number one, I love the classic Mothman story. Mm-hmm. When I was working on Monster Hunters, I got to go to Mothman Festival in Point Pleasant, and it was a really fun experience, you know. And I just. For, for some of the listeners, for some of the listeners who don't know the story, um, uh, kind of give us a little bit of background on on Point Pleasant. Yeah. So in 1966 and 67, there was a wave of a lot of weird stuff, really. But people in the Point Pleasant, West Virginia area were reporting seeing this uh, big humanoid creature that had wings and glowing red eyes. Mm-hmm. And um, it got nicknamed Mothman by the press. And uh, a lot of people said that they saw this thing, whatever it was. And also around the same time, there were UFO sightings, Mm -hmm. um, appearances by the men in black who were interrogating people about what they had seen. So a lot of kind of strange things happening at once. And then uh, there's a bridge near Point Pleasant's and that collapsed in December of 1967, and about 40 people died in this um, bridge collapse. And uh, and then the the Mothman sightings kind of disappeared for a while, mm-hmm. and um, people thought that this creature was maybe a uh, you know an omen of doom that was going to happen. So um, since then, there's been other sightings of flying humanoid type creatures and uh there was a couple reports in 2011 and then it really started to pick up in 2016 in the chicago area of people seeing a very similar thing uh, a flying humanoid creature with red eyes Mm -hmm. that was appearing um, in different spots around chicago initially and then um, there were sightings around other parts of the, the midwest as well So naturally, I was very interested in this because Milwaukee is about an hour and a half north of Chicago. So it is kind of in my backyard. I was like, what is going on here? Right. So um, I also happen to know some of the investigators around the Midwest because after I wrote Monster Hunters, 
I started organizing a Milwaukee paranormal conference that happens every year. It's a small little conference, but um, we have different guest speakers and, and, and vendors. So through that, I've gotten to know a lot of investigators from around the Midwest because they participate in the conference and right. I've got that connection. So I was able to kind of see their investigations of this case unfold. And, um, but it's a very strange case because I, I still, even after interviewing so many people and following the story, I still don't know that I can say what's going on there exactly. Yeah. It seems like there are at least a couple people who have genuinely seen something mm -hmm. and have talked about their experience. But it also seems very likely to me that there is someone who is uh, doing some internet hoaxing in this as well. Just making yeah. up reports because, I don't know, they're bored. They want to yeah. mess around with investigators. Yeah, I, you know, I, I guess before the internet, you know, was around, I guess it was easier to believe people and, you know, yeah. all the, the software that's available to the doctor, these pictures. Yeah. Um, but, I mean, those those two couples back in, what, 66... Yeah, and their story is pretty much aligned with it too. So, yeah, yeah, and, and like you say, you know, this is before you could be very anonymous on on the internet. So, mm -hmm. those people, the initial couples that saw it, they filed a police report on it, you know, and they they talked about their the case face to face with people. Mm -hmm. Now, you know, you get an anonymous report on the internet. I'm like, well, I don't know who wrote this. It could yeah. have been some ten-year-old kid that's yeah. that's bored, you know. Yeah. yeah. So, so I, you know, you have to really take Chicago Mothman reportings with a grain of salt, uh -huh. like you know, maybe, and um, and especially a lot of the reports seem to be, have been written by the same person because the language is just it follows like a formula, you know. Okay. There's certain words yeah. that you see again and again, and you're like, this has got to be the same person writing these reports. Yeah. yeah. But, you know, I'm still, you know, I'm I'm always trying to be open-minded about stuff, and mm -hmm. um, I'm definitely interested in seeing the reports and, uh, and stuff like that. Yeah. I mean, that's... The, the, the Mothman stuff that, you know, kind of... Um, I'm 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 a little bit more leery on that stuff. I mean, I'm mm -hmm. sure there back in '66 there might have been something happening, but you know, yeah, I don't know. I, I, until I see it, obviously. Yeah. Um, and you also did some hunting with uh, was it uh, you were looking for Sasquatch in one one uh, yeah. chapter in the book? Yeah, yeah, that I would say was uh, one of the weirdest nights of my life. I'd say uh -huh. it's definitely up there, but. Um, I think this was this was kind of towards the end of working on the book too. So, um, I the one thing that was on I had like like I said I had made this list and it was kind of like a bucket list of stuff I wanted to do for this book. Right. I wanted to go on a ghost investigation. I wanted to go to a UFO conference, you know, and I was like I really want to get out there in the field with mm -hmm. some Bigfoot uh, researchers. So I was referred to this um, a guy who lives in Michigan. His name is Jim Sherman. Um, very nice guy. He would seem to be a pretty normal guy. He's a, a high school teacher, and um, uh, he coaches like the track team, you know. But he spends his his uh, weekends off looking for evidence of uh, the Sasquatch. And so I got in contact with him and he was like, Hey, you got really good timing because, um, I know this couple that owns a farm in the middle of nowhere in Michigan, mm -hmm. and they've been having all this strange stuff happen on their property. So I'm going to go, uh, investigate if you want to join me. You know, I was like, yeah, yeah, sure. Of course. So we went and we camped out. Um, this was kind of, it was a farm, but there was also a forested area that was part of this property. So we camped out near the woods 
and um you know he kind of showed me like his different methods Mm -hmm. of trying to get evidence and it was very interesting but not a lot was happening um but then the last night we were there i was about to go to sleep and i heard this blood curdling howl (laughs) which sounded like it was right next to my tent yeah and i was like oh no you know that'll wake you up real (laughs) (laughs) i was um i was laying in my tent and i was frozen with fear i couldn't move for like a couple minutes because i didn't know what to do so you know i kind of unzipped my tent eventually and looked around and i didn't see anything there i ran over to jim was in his jeep and he was trying to text me. I knocked on the window and scared him really badly. <laughs> <laughs> After hearing the screech, yeah, that would yeah. scare the crap out of you. <laughs> so uh, I got in the Jeep and, you know, he was like, did you hear that? And I was like, yeah, of course I did. It, it was so loud. It like kind of shook the ground, you know. Wow. It was loud. And then there was like this kind of running sound. And we don't know what it what that was. Um, mm-hmm. He thinks... It could have been an aggressive coyote or something like that. But anyway, you know, I'm sitting in this Jeep, like looking at the field because I think that I'm going to see a Bigfoot walking around. And I notice that there's this ball of light in the sky and it's kind of hovering and then it like zips over oh. and, and like hovers and like light comes out of it and it like zips over here really quickly. Yeah. And it's kind of like hovering and. I was like, Jim, do you see this? And we get out and we looked at it through binoculars and it was very strange. We tried to get video of it. We did, but it's not very clear at all what's going on. And then it disappeared. And, you know, I don't know what that thing was, but it was unlike anything I've seen or can think of an explanation for. Right. People are like, oh, that was a drone. It moved like way too quickly to be a drone. And yeah. this was this, by the way, is like at two in the morning too. So, and you said of, it was a ball of light too, right? Yeah, it was like this uh, hovering ball of light. We could see there was a little bit of like a green or uh, and red light mm-hmm. that would sometimes appear on this thing, mm-hmm. and just the movement of it was so strange. And yeah, and then we we told the couple, you know, oh we saw this thing yeah and they're like yeah we've seen it before too see when i when i read that the first thing that popped into my mind was like ball lightning yeah that kind of hovers on the ground and and smoothly moves Mm -hmm. so i I think i think that might be out Mm -hmm. huh yeah i'm not sure you know i've never been like oh yeah that was definitely the aliens but i don't know what it could have been could have been an alien drone. <laughs> yeah, right. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, so that was a very weird night for me. <laughs> yeah. Um, so tell me about the uh, conferences that you um, that you are, organize up in Milwaukee. Yeah. Um, I think it started because I knew Monster Hunters was coming out in mm-hmm. uh, summer of 2015. And I was really excited about it, of course. Yeah. And um, I was like, you know, what am I going to do for the book launch? And I was like, you know, rather than doing just like a typical bookstore appearance, Mm -hmm. I could put together like a small conference where some of the people that I wrote about that live in the area could talk firsthand about what they do and, Mm -hmm. you know, show evidence and stuff like that. So it, it started to grow a little bit and um, it's not like a, a huge conference that you'd find like in a big conference center or something, right. but we, we found a cool venue for it, which is uh, the Irish cultural center here in Milwaukee, which is in mm-hmm. a very old church that's been converted into a, a cultural center. And uh, it was really fun and, and very well received. There had not been an event like that in Milwaukee for quite some time. Um, yeah. There was like a paranormal expo type thing, but that had not been around for 10 or 15 years at that point. 
Mm-hmm. So I think people were really excited for it and we had very good attendance and I was like, well, let's do this every year. I was just going to do it as like maybe a one-time thing. Yeah. And, uh, and now it's, um, it's grown a little bit and we do it, um, every October It's happening this year, October 13th through the 15th. Awesome. Awesome. Yeah. Yeah. Um, you know, it, it kind of seems like, you know, back in the, was it the forties or fifties UFO and paranormal thing stuff was at its peak. Then it kind of died down and it seems like it's, it's, it's back with a vengeance again. In the there's last a lot of 10, 20 great, years. Yeah. Yeah. There's a lot of great conferences. Um, yeah. All around the country. Uh, I've noticed that there's a lot more, uh, a lot of towns will have like a, a monster legend of some mm-hmm. kind, you know, mm-hmm. local legend. And I've been seeing a lot of like new small festivals and stuff that celebrate their local yeah. monster legend, which I think is great. I mean, it's a great way to preserve that yeah. sort of regional culture and history. Yeah. I don't know what kind of monsters St. Louis has. I'll have to dig into that. Oh, there is, uh, there is something, I think. I can't remember what though. I, I know but, we have, there's a legend of the gargoyles around the Anheuser-Busch brewery down here, the main brewery down oh, here okay. on yeah. each corner, but I don't think that's a paranormal type thing. Yeah. Right. To sit up there and guard it. <laughs> oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. But, um, but cool. And, and you have, um, links on your, on your website for, for, uh, your conferences and, and your books and stuff. Yeah, yeah, my website, tkrulos.com, that's T-E-A-K-R-U-L-O-S. Mm-hmm. Um, it's got links to all my books. Uh, I, I do a podcast. I ha- we haven't done a new episode in a while, but you can find a link to all the old episodes. And um, I write a column that I do maybe like twice a month. It's called T's Weird Week. Mm-hmm. And this is about like whatever weird thing I feel like talking about so uh that's yeah. awesome i mean if you if you love weird stuff and even if not just check it out tkrulos.com we'll have it on the uh, bottom of the screen there for you so t i i, I appreciate you coming on here and, thank you and talking about some some weird stuff <laughs> oh yeah, yeah yeah thank you all right and uh and best of luck to you and uh, hopefully we'll we'll chat again soon sometime okay great thanks all right. Okay, that's all the time we have for now. My thanks to T. Krulos for taking the time to chat with us. Again, for more information about T, head on over to his website. I'll include that in the show notes. Also, if you are interested in more Wood Ape reports, head on over to the North American Wood Ape Conservancy. And just like some of the UFO sites that I've talked about before, there are a lot of Wood Ape reports to look through. That website is also going to be in the show notes. Thank you for watching today. Again, if you have a paranormal story to share or know someone who does, please email me at paranormalamongus72 at gmail.com. That's paranormalamongus72 at gmail.com, and I'll read the story on a future episode. Stay safe out there, everyone, and I'll see you on the next episode of Paranormal Among Us.